three of the world's most extreme athletes are about to start the journey of a lifetime. Yoki Summer, a 27-year-old Norwegian who became a YouTube star overnight by producing some of the most spectacular videos ever seen. He has helped push the boundaries of what is possible in modern wingsuit flying. We are a group of people that live a very special and different life. With them is Espen Fadness, a former pro base world champion, known to be one of the fastest guys in wingsuit Espen flying. Fadness. At the age of 33, Espen decided to quit his job and pursue a lifelong dream as an extreme sport athlete. We are doing what is almost an inhuman sport. Together with our flying cameraman, Ludovic Wirth, a 34-year-old Frenchman who has made a career of filming his friends as they discover new ways to push the limits in base jumping. I choose it because I love it. Traveling around the world, motivated by one equal goal. They will fly by spectacular landmarks, under bridges and jump buildings in the Far East. Experiencing extreme conditions and amazing landscapes, they will discover that things don't always work out the way they want. I honestly don't think we should argue about this. They will test their friendship, explore new cultures and experience all signs of life, all in the search of the perfect flight. The guys find themselves in China and are heading south to the Hunan province and the mighty Tianmen Mountains. The mountains in this area are known for steep peaks and spectacular rock formations, all covered in deep green vegetation, which makes it a perfect wingsuit location. Base jumping in this area is strictly forbidden, but with weeks of planning and help from local government contacts, they have finally gotten permission and are ready to discover what China has to offer. Anyone has In a deep valley in the mountains, the guys find an old village where they will stay during their days in China. So this village here is by far the most beautiful village I've ever seen in my life. It is like I'm stepping into medieval time in China. It's like stepping into a movie. And not only is this village beautiful in itself, the way it's built, but the backdrop of it is Tianmen Mountains. It's like the Chinese version of Trollstigen in Norway. It got tons of more corner turns and it's just much bigger. Hi, good morning. The next morning, the guys are ready for their first day of jumping and head for the cable car. But the weather is not on their side. With strong gusts and fog, the chances of going through with a jump are minimal. And Yoki has an insecure feeling about the whole situation. Hey, fuck, I had so many uh, like bad wipe jumps that... Yeah, and then you, know, you have those gusts. And I told myself, I'm never ever gonna let a camera push me to do when I have a bad feeling. I, I, I really have a bad feeling. Yeah, that good. is my main fucking problem though. That's good. Are you guys uh, ready? No, we're not ready. We are discussing the conditions. It's a lot of gusty wind up here, and uh, we are still considering the wind and looking at it. Okay, just let us know. After some discussion, Yoki decides to pass. But Espen and Ludo are fired up and ready to jump. Don't give me shit later on for not jumping. No, no, I won't. No, I surely won't. No, no, I won't.
really good conditions actually. Uh, challenging exit. Challenging but otherwise, exit. okay. But uh, in the minute we started flying and had pressurized suits, it was all good. Uh, but I mean, at the same time, you know, you get that extra nerve when you have strong wind at the exit. I have to do that. Ludo, our camera flyer, he is like my big brother. He's Ow. really unique for us because he, <laughs> of course, he can fly incredibly good and he always get the shot. So for us as a team, he is our most important tool and our most important flyer. Uh, the funny thing about our group is that Espen, he always loses his stuff in the morning. I'm the one that got born five minutes late. And Ludo, <laughs> he's the one that is whipping us around. I'm that early bird because that is the only time in the day when I can be alone with myself. I like that moment when I can hear the sounds of the mountain, all the birds are starting to, to sing around and that, that fog in the morning and that, that, that nature that is, that is waking up around me, that is a kind of a mystical moment and that is very important to me to keep myself concentrated and, and quiet and, and be ready for the action that's coming. Yoke, Espen and me, we, we know each other now for a while. We've been jumping together for some time. And we kind of set up kind of a ritual together. I, I wake up early, I get my cup of coffee, I get my cigarette in the morning. And then we meet up together in the morning start thinking about what we're doing, look up at the mountain, check out the, what the weather looks like. And that, that's the kind of ritual that we've put together and that makes us a good team. Hey yeah, guys, let's do it like this. Uh, we just pack up, we walk over, take the cable car up and check this jump uh, Yeah, we can, uh, it doesn't cost much to go and have a look. Ah, it might just it be might a little better from up there. So. Yeah. You know, even though it's not visual from the bottom to the top, but it may be possible to, to have the fight done. Yeah. We don't need to see the whole way. I agree. That's, a, that's actually a, a very good way of, uh, of working together that puts us, everybody, in a good mood for, for what we're going to do in the, in the day. Towards the end of their trip, the weather is finally clearing up, and the guys will try out a new and dangerous line. Espen, Yuki, and Ludo will follow the cable car lines down the mountain. But one of them will come face to face with the fact that, in this sport, there's a thin line between life and death. When I do risk sports, um I know that people that care about me worry because I feel the same when I see my friends do very technical, difficult lines skiing or I see a good friend um, pushing his limits as a base jumper. And uh, then I can just imagine how much my mother worries or my father, my sisters, brothers, good friends that don't jump themselves. They don't know the sport. They don't know how I deal with, with risk management. They are just worried. This is, this is the big downside of doing this sport because after all it's all about, for me, life. It's about relations, it's about the people you care about, it's about the moments I have with uh, people I like and, and love. And, uh, and it's a huge downside that I bring this worry upon the people I care the most about. It's a go, yes. We are in the cable car. Sweet. Okay. Perfect, we're ready. Let's do this thing.
jump out as Juk in front, me second and Louis the third. And everything goes quite smooth into the first turn. Uh, I have Juk in front of me. And all of a sudden my wingsuit turns 30 degrees right without any warning. I don't know why it's turning right, it's just do it. And I'm kind of looking straight into a cable car. I see people and it's really coming fast towards me. If I have hit that cable car, I don't think anyone would survive. I don't know what I did, I just acted intuitive and bent up my arms, my chest, everything I had and tried to move left. And I mean, I was seriously close to that cable car. It is, it's just this moment of out of control. I've been fortunate enough to jump 13 years without any experiences like it. I've never been more happy for being alive than I was when I landed on that jump. Oh, God damn it. You okay? Yeah, okay. In the next episode of The Perfect Flight, the guys travel to the breathtaking Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean. I'm in love with this island. Rising out of the lush green forest is a rugged volcanic mountain that is begging to be jumped. We're not jumping there.